This is one of multiple videos discussing switching options available in GNS3. In previous videos, which I've linked below, I discussed Cisco IOS V Layer 2, which is the recommended way of implementing switching with GNS3. I've also discussed the GNS3 built-in switch. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the Ether Switch module, which is a module that you insert into routers to provide switching capability. So here's an example of a 3745 router with an Ether Switch module. They come in different sizes and are available for different router types, such as the 2600, 3600, 3700, and other routers. Here's an example of an NM ESW 16 port module available on eBay. So you could buy a physical module such as this and insert it into a physical router. But what we're going to do is use an Ether switch module virtually in GNS3. Now Ether switch modules provide switching capability in routers. So as an example, you could have a 3600 series router at a remote site and then provide power to IP phones. So essentially, rather than having a layer three switch, which is a switch providing routing capabilities, here you've got a router providing switching capabilities. So once again, these are network modules that you insert in a router. Now, as always, a good place to go for information is the documentation page. If you search for iOS, one of the hits is Cisco iOS images for DynaMips. Now this document explains a lot about the images available for DynaMips, but one of the last parts of this document discusses Cisco Catalyst switches. So we're told that it's not possible to emulate Catalyst switches with DynaMips. This is because of ASIC restrictions. If you want advanced switching options, you should use an IOU layer two image or iOS V layer two image. The recommendation today is to use iOS V layer two. However, if you wanna use DynaMips, because let's say for example, you don't have access to an iOS V layer two image, you can use DynaMips with 2600s, 3600s and 3700 series routers. So you may only have access to a Cisco IOS image. You can use the Ether switch module with DynaMips and GNS3, but you need to remember that this module works differently to a standard ethernet switch. So some commands are different. VTP doesn't work necessarily in the same way. It doesn't support many features. So as an example, DHCP snooping is not supported. Dynamic ether channel is not supported. Multiple spanning tree is not supported. Rapid spanning tree is not supported. LECP is not supported. And many other options such as private VLANs, port security, and others are not supported on this module. However, if you want to implement basic switching and all you have is a Cisco IOS image, you could use the Ether switch module with a 2600, 3600, or 3700. Once again, the best way to implement switching today with GNS3 is to use Cisco IOS V layer two images. But that being said, let's look at how to configure an ether switch module within GNS3 and build a basic topology with multiple VLANs. In this example, I'm using a Mac and GNS3 2.0. The process, however, is very similar on Windows as well as GNS3 1.5. So go to GNS3, Preferences, Dynamips, and under the Dynamips heading, select iOS routers. In this example, I already have multiple 3725 routers configured, but what I'm gonna do here is click New and create a new router on the GNS3 VM, but add 
the ether switch module to the router. So I'm gonna run it once again on the Genius 3 VM. That's recommended on Windows and Mac. You could run Dynamips locally, but again, I'm gonna run it on the Genius 3 VM. So I'm gonna click Next. In this example, I've already got a 3725 image. So I'm gonna use an existing image. You could also select a new image and browse for that image. But I've already got 3725 routers configured, so I'm gonna use the same image and click Next. Now this is the important checkbox. Notice the name of the router is currently C3725, but when I check this option, it changes to Ether Switch Router. I'm gonna click Next. For this specific router, I need to configure 256 meg of RAM. You can check the minimum and maximum RAM requirements for your platform by clicking here, which will take you to Cisco's website. Please see my other videos where I show you how to install and configure GNS3 and where I also explain this option. So here, I'm gonna click Next. So I've got an Ether Switch module installed in the router. I could, as an example, add another one. So I'll add to and click Next. This router supports WIC cards, so I could add some of those and click Next. An idle PC value is very important. Make sure that one is selected. If it's not, click on Idle PC Finder to find an idle PC value. Click Finish. So the Ether Switch router has now been added to GNS3, so I can click OK. Under Switches, I now have the Ether Switch router available, and I could drag that to the workspace. I'll zoom in here to make it easier to see. And what I could do now is drag some routers into the topology. What I'll do is configure the two routers on the left in one VLAN and configure the two routers on the right in a different VLAN. Be careful with your interface numbers. You need to make sure that the devices are connected to the right ports, in other words, to the Ether switch ports and not to standard Ethernet ports on the router. If you're not sure about the ports, right click on the router, click configure, click slots. And as you can see here, I've got the network module installed in slot one and another one installed in slot two. So I don't want to connect the routers to slot zero. In other words, I don't want to use Fast Ethernet 00 or 01 because they are not Ether switch module interfaces. Those are router interfaces. I could view the labels and make the diagram look pretty. I'm not gonna bother about doing that now, but you could obviously make the diagram look nice. I'm gonna start up the devices. In this example, I'm using the routers as PC type devices. I'll open up a console to the routers. And the most important one for this discussion is the Ether switch module. Notice when I log in, I'm told that this is a normal router with an Ether switch module installed. In other words, an NM16 ESW. It has been pre-configured with hard-coded speed and duplex values. To create VLANs, use the command VLAN database in exec mode. And after creating all the desired VLANs, use exit to apply the configuration. To view existing VLANs, use the command show VLAN switch brief. Genius 3 also makes this easy because there are some alias commands that we can use, such as VL, which is the same as typing show VLAN switch brief. So these macros have been created. In configure mode, we can use the command VAX to add a VLAN. At the moment, the show VLAN switch brief command shows us that all ports are configured in VLAN 1. 
In other words, all Ethernet ports on on the Ether switch modules are in VLAN one. Here's our first Ether switch module. Here's the second one. So I could exit out of the router, press Enter again, and I can see the commands to add a VLAN. So conf t va two. So we told that the VLAN has been created. So the shortcut command is once again VL. Notice VLAN two now exists. So I could use the command VA3 to create VLAN3. VL shows us that VLAN3 has been created. Once again, VL is a macro for this command. Show VLAN switch brief. So I'll paste that in. And you can now see that VLAN3 and VLAN2 exist on our Ether switch module. So in this topology, fast ethernet 1, 0, and 1, 1 are gonna be put into one VLAN, and fast ethernet 1, 2, and 1, 3 are gonna be put into a separate VLAN. So conf t, interface f, 1 slash 0, switch port, mode. Notice we don't have DTP or dynamic trunk protocol as an option, so we'll use access here to specify that it's an access port, and then switch port access, VLAN, and I'll use two. Interface F1 slash one, switch port access, VLAN two. Show run. In the output here, you can see it's a router with some additional configuration added. We also told that we shouldn't use fast ethernet 00, zero or fast ethernet 01. Now this router has some serial interfaces. You may decide not to add that because you just want this to act as a switch in your topology. But notice here, fast ethernet 1.0 and 1.1 now belong to VLAN 2. So what I could do is go on to F1 slash one, switch port access VLAN 3, interface F1 slash two, switch port access VLAN 3. VL shows us our VLAN configuration. So I made a mistake here, so let me fix that. Interface F1 slash one should be in VLAN two, and then one slash two should be in three, which is correct, and one three should be in three. So VL Again shows us that these two ports are in VLAN two, which is correct per our diagram. And these two ports belong to VLAN three, which is correct. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If it was of benefit to you, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.